Hi there, Internet. Before we get to the feature presentation, I just want you to know that I filmed this video about three months ago, and it's kind of been in development hell until now. So with that being said, the information that I talk about is most likely a bit outdated, but the show must go on, and I'm really happy with how the video turned out, so we're gonna roll with it. So, uh, I hope you enjoy, and I apologize if everything is completely out of whack. The hair is getting out of control. It's too long, and I don't feel like styling it, so I'm gonna do the simple solution of covering it up with a beanie. There we go. Perfect. Hello Internet, this is Olin from What I'm Listening To. Hope you all are continuing to stay safe, stay healthy, keep those hands nice and clean, and you're wearing that mask when you go outside. Welcome back to another volume of my rare and hard to find CD series, the show where I talk about rare and hard to find CDs. If for whatever reason you have not seen any other episodes of this show and are starting on this one, then I recommend you stop this and go watch the other editions. I don't completely feel like defining what makes a CD rare and hard to find at the beginning of each episode. It just takes too long. But I will talk quickly about the general format of the show because, well, I've made some changes to it with this episode. So getting into that, I will present an album. I will get into the general information about the artist and the album, as well as how it sounds. I will then talk about the reason or reasons why the CD is rare, as well as if you can get it on digital formats. So iTunes, Amazon MP3, or Bandcamp. Those are the three main ones I will cover. I will then go into some pricing statistics using the Discogs website. Mainly, I will be looking at the lowest price someone paid for it, the highest price someone paid for it, and the median between those numbers. From there, I will also look at the listings on the Discogs website to kind of get an idea of how much it's going for. But not only that, I will also be looking at prices from eBay and Amazon. Just because I had been limiting myself to the Discogs website on previous episodes and I wanted to go forward. I wanted to see where else it was being sold and how much it was going for. And finally, I will reveal where I got my copy of the CD as well as how much I paid for it. So with all of that being said, let's jump into the CDs. And the first CD I have for you today, I have Run With The Hunted by Sky Hill. Sky Hill was a duo that hailed from Brooklyn, New York. The notable thing about Sky Hill is one of the members was Dan Avedon, who would later go on to be a part of Game Grumps, as well as form the band Ninja Sex Party. But prior to doing all that, he was in this band. This was the second musical project he had gotten involved in. This was the only album the band released, which came out in 2007. The way I would describe this album's sound is very 80s style pop, electronic pop, even disco at times. It's very groovy, very melodic, deep at times, but for the most part, it's a pop record. Now, why is this CD rare? Well, like I said, it's the band's only album, and it was released on a label called Just Like Honey Records. I did a little bit of digging on the label and discovered that it's a label actually run by the other member of the band, Peter Lenoy. In other words, this is a self-released album. And pure speculation here, but it's likely that the band only did one initial pressing that they could afford at the time, and release those copies, and that was it. They didn't do any more pressings. And it makes sense, because the band is no longer together. Like I said, Dan is off doing Ninja Sex Party and Game Grumps related project. Peter, on the other hand, not really sure what he's doing. But Sky Hill did make a brief return by releasing a one-off single sometime in the 2010s, but that's about it. You can easily buy this album digitally on iTunes and Amazon MP3. But as far as getting a copy of the CD goes, let's look at the prices. According to Discogs, the lowest price someone paid for this CD was $8.27. 
the highest was $23.64, and the median between that was $14.73. As of this recording, there is only one listing for the CD on Discogs, and it is going for $21.95. And looking at other sources, there are currently no listings for it on eBay, and there's a couple listings on Amazon, the lowest being $17.27. But, if you don't think that's enough, you can also pay $902.81 or $970.43. Now where did I get my copy? I managed to snag it on Amazon, and I only paid $10.85. Obviously, based on those statistics, I got this for a complete bargain. And it's interesting because I got this from Amazon's warehouse, so it does kind of imply that it may come back in stock at some point. I don't know, you might have to do some shopping. But otherwise, it's a fairly rare album to come across. A lot of self-release albums are like that. But if you do manage to find a copy, I absolutely recommend checking it out. It's interesting to hear Dan making music that isn't silly and talking about poop, fart, and sex and whatnot. It's serious pop music and it sounds great. next CD I have for you today, I have Fountains by Sean McCann. Sean McCann, not to be confused with the Irish singer, is a composer hailing from Goleta, California, which is about two hours away from Los Angeles. He has made tons and tons of music, some of which were more widely released than others. This particular CD was one of those albums that came out in 2010. The way I would describe this album's sound in general in general terms, it's experimental, but it's ambient, it's drony, I guess you could say there's some modern classical influences to it. Basically, it sounds very similar to the works of Stars of the Lid. Now, why is the CD rare? Well, for starters, only 90 physical copies exist. In fact, I have number 59 of 90. I was able to reach out to Sean via Instagram to ask him a couple questions about the CD. As it turns out, Every album's artwork is unique. He did something different with all of them. All of these copies were all handmade and hand numbered by Sean himself. He used watercolor as well as collages of hotels and nature, but for the most part, they're pretty different. As of right now, you can only get a digital copy of this album on Sean's Bandcamp, but the cool thing about it is he currently has it set to name your price, so if you wanted, you could get it for free. Now, going into the Discog statistics, the lowest price someone paid for the CD was 99 cents, the highest was $20 even, and the median between that was 950. As of this recording, there is only one listing for the CD on Discogs, and it's going for $15.79, but it is a non-US seller. And looking at other sources, there is currently one listing on eBay going for $21.30, but on Amazon, if you were to search for the album, the page doesn't exist. Now, where did I get my copy of the CD? I bought mine from a seller on Discogs, and I only paid $19.26 plus shipping. That's roughly on the higher end of things if you're looking at the stats, but I would say for a double album, that's pretty fairly priced. I have seen so many other self-released experimental CDs that go for way, way more money, so $20 was not too much for me. Plus, I had downloaded the album prior to buying the CD and had listened to it for about a year, so I finally decided I should just get a physical copy of it. Sean's work is excellent, and I highly recommend checking it out. A link to his Bandcamp will be in the description below. And also, shout out to him for being willing to answer my questions on Instagram. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Next CD I have for you today, I have Life of Leisure by Washed Out. 
Washed Out is a project created by the Georgian musician Ernest Weatherly Green Jr. That's a mouthful. This is the second EP released under the project's name, which came out in 2009. It's best known for featuring the song Feel It All Around, which was used as the opening theme for the show Portlandia. The way I would describe this EP sound is chill wave. It's one of the many things that popularized that genre. But in even broader terms, it's dream pop, it's synth pop, and it's electronica. Now, why is this CD rare? Well, the label that put it out, Mexican Summer, only released the CD version as a limited run, most likely opting out to focus on the digital and vinyl release. The vinyl release being much, much easier to acquire. And what's interesting about the CD release is the packaging. It's not on a digipack or a jewel case CD. It's in this simple cardboard sleeve. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing terribly special about it, but that's just how it was packaged. And to get a digital version of it, you can find it on iTunes and Amazon MP3, no problem. Going into the Discog statistics for the CD release, the lowest price someone paid for this was $14.12. The highest was $37.75, and the median between that was $30 even. As of this recording, the current listing prices of the CD go for $24.71, all the way to $65.48. All of these sellers are non-US. And looking into Amazon and eBay, both sites have no listings for the CD, only the vinyl version. Now, where did I get my copy? Well, I got it on Discogs, and I paid $30 even, plus shipping, and it was imported from Japan. With the shipping and handling, I probably paid a little bit more than I should have for it, but honestly, I really wanted a copy. If you are a fan of electronica music, then this is an EP absolutely worth listening to, and I was really, really glad I was able to snag a physical copy of it and was kind of baffled by the fact that the CD version was as rare as it was. But excited to have this in my collection. Do yourself a favor, listen to it. The next CD I have for you today, I have the self-titled album by the band Ogre. You asshole. Ogre You Asshole is a Japanese band hailing specifically from Nagano, and this is their debut album that was released in 2005. The story behind their band name is quite fascinating. Ogre You Asshole's original drummer, Arada Nishi, bumped into Modest Mouse bassist Eric Judy on the streets of Japan near a club. Nishi, who recognized Judy, approached him and asked Judy to name his band. Judy, who was drunk at the time, responded, I can't, before proceeding to write Ogre You Asshole on Nishi's arm. Later on, when both bands were touring together, Judy says he doesn't remember this happening, but that's apparently how it went. And Modest Mouse's influence go further than just naming the band. The way I would describe this album's sound is the Japanese version of Modest Mouse's old work. It's raw, kind of wobbly, twangy, more so in the raw sense rather than a country sense, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, then just go listen to a song off of Modest Mouse's first album, and that's basically what this band sounds like. Now, why is this CD rare? Well, it's Pretty plain and simple. This album was only released in Japan, so if you don't live in Japan and you want a copy of it, you need to get it imported. And as far as getting a digital copy of the album, at least in the US, there are no sources. You can't get it on iTunes, you can't get it on Amazon MP3, and you can't get it on Bandcamp. But when I was looking into this, I did notice that iTunes had a bunch of the band's other albums available, but not this one. Now going into the Discog statistics for the CD, the low the lowest price someone paid for it was $29 even, the highest was $60 even, and the median between that was $31 even. As of this recording, current listing prices of it go for $29 even to $55 even, and all of these are non-US sellers. And looking into other online sources, there is one listing for the album on eBay going for $41.67. 
And on Amazon, the prices range from $42.60 to $47.05. Now where did I get my copy of this? Well, I bought it on Discogs, and I paid $30 even, plus shipping, and it was imported. Fun fact, I actually bought this CD and the Washed Out EP from the same seller together. He was a really nice Japanese seller from Osaka, and it got to my house insanely quick. So shout out to DHL, I guess. But anyways, I love this album. Anybody who has watched enough of my videos will know that I love J-pop and J-rock music. I have numerous albums by Japanese bands in my collection, and this one I was excited to add to it. If you are a fan of Modest Mouse and or J-Rock music, then this one, absolutely worth checking out. I'll leave a link to wherever you can listen to the album in the description below. You'll likely have to listen to whatever was posted on YouTube, but that's better than nothing. I have for you today, I have the Butthole Surfers Double Live. The Butthole Surfers are an amazing and absolutely insane punk band that came from San Antonio, Texas. This is one of the two live albums that the band ever released. This one came out in 1988. The album was released partly to document their winter tour of that year, 1988 but mostly it was released to try to combat the selling of bootleg recordings that were taken at their shows. The band even boasting that this album had mildly better sound quality compared to the bootleg recordings out there. The way I would describe this album's sound, um, well, it's punk in general terms, but more specifically, it's noise punk, it's psychedelic, it's off the chain, it's insane sounding music. In the 80s, it was music unlike anything anybody had heard. Now, why is this CD rare? Well, for starters, it's currently out of print, and more specifically, there were only 4,750 copies of the CDs that were manufactured. I have 2,137. Can you see that? Uh, focus, yep, there it is, right there. Funny enough, if you want a digital copy of this album, you can get it for free on the band's website. But as far as physical copies go, you are going to be doing some hunting. Now going into the Discog statistics for this release, we are going to be looking at the US release. This album did come out in different countries, but this one is the US release. The lowest price someone paid for this was $34.99. The highest was $60 even, and the median between that was $38.98. And as of this recording, there is only one listing for the album on Discogs for $176.47, and ironically, it's a non-US seller. But like I said, that is only for the US version. There are other listings for the non-US releases on Discogs, and they all have varying prices. But for whatever reason, if you want the version that came out in the US, then that's your only option. If you were to look elsewhere, there is one listing on eBay for $64.99. And on Amazon, the prices range from $148.75 to $193.63. Now, where did I get my copy of the CD? Well, I got it on Discogs, and I paid $54.99 plus shipping. That's pretty expensive for a CD, but if you're a collector, that's the price you sometimes have to pay. And the fact that I was able to find a US seller meant that I didn't have to import it and pay the additional fees for it. And better yet, it's in excellent condition. Let's actually bust this open and take a look at the packaging. So it's packaged in this thick, thick jewel case here. And if we open it up, we have the first disc right there. We have the booklet that has information and artwork about the band. And then the second thing has the second disc here with a little piece of bubble tape to just protect it. It, it was there when I bought it. I just kept it there. If you are a fan of psychedelic music, weird music, experimental music, punk music, whatever, and you have not listened to the Butthole Surfers, then definitely check this out. It's 
some of the weirdest music I've ever listened to. Their studio albums are just as good too, but considering you can get this for free on the band's website, there is no reason for you not to check it out. But I'm glad to have this album in my collection. It's awesome, it looks cool, it's got a freaky ass cover, but that's just kind of how the butthole surfers were. <laughs> The next CD I have for you today, I have Here at the Home by Tribe. Tribe was an underground band that came from Boston, Massachusetts. And this is the band's debut album that originally came out in 1990. And some of the members of the band have had a fairly interesting career in music. The band released this album independently, and then they later released their follow-up material on a major label. The second album, Abort, even had most of the songs from this album re-recorded entirely. But sadly, the band broke up in 1994, most likely due to the fact that they just didn't break through the mainstream. They only really had a following in the Boston area. But that didn't end some of the band members' careers there. Some of them went on to become some of the founding members of the video game developing company Harmonix. And they would go on to work on the early releases of the Guitar Hero games, as well as all of the Rock Band games. In fact, their song Outside, which appears on this album, was featured as a bonus track in Rock Band 1. Now, why is this CD rare? Well, like I said before, this album was released independently on a label called Rutabaga Records. I did a little research on Rutabaga and found that the label only released three things, and they are all by the band Tribe. But other than that, there really wasn't much else information about them. So I can infer from that data is either Rutabaga was a label created by the band, or it was just a small label that was limited to the Boston area. But regardless of the reasoning, only a limited amount of CDs of this album exist. The way I would describe this album's sound is, I guess in general terms, alternative rock. But because it was recorded in the late 80s, it's got a nice sort of 80s flair to it. Borderlining new wave, but not in the corny sense. I, I guess you could say it's just 80s alternative rock. And as far as acquiring it digitally, you can't get it anywhere. It's not on iTunes, it's not on Amazon MP3, and it's not on Bandcamp, at least of this recording. Now going into the Discog statistics for the CD, the lowest price someone paid for it was $29.99. The highest was $50 even, and the median between that was $40 even. As of this recording, current listing prices go for between $99.99 .99 to $125 even. And looking into both Amazon and eBay, neither of those sources have listings for it, so you basically are only limited to Discogs. And where I got my copy? Well, it was from Discogs, and I paid $45 even plus shipping. That might seem like a lot of money for a CD, and yeah, it pretty much is, but if you look at the current listing prices, I got it for a fairly cheap price. I could have easily dropped $100 on this, but I waited and waited and waited until I found something under $50 and jumped on it as soon as it was up. And I'm glad I have this album. I had once owned a copy of the album Abort, and I had bought it because I really wanted that song outside because I had heard it on Rock Band 1. But the re-recording sounds vastly different than the version that's on here. The version on here, I think, is the superior version. And at the time I was in the market for the CD, like I said, I only saw people selling it for over $50, $100 sometimes, and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So seeing it for $45 was exciting, and I hadn't heard anything else from this album, but I figured I like that song outside, so maybe the rest of it will sound just as good. And I was happy to hear it does. The last CD I have for you today I am very, very excited to talk about. 
I have Blood Hot by Tess Parks. Tess Parks is a musician and photographer hailing from Toronto, Canada. This is her debut album that came out in 2013. Tess would later go on to collaborate with Brian Jonestown Massacre's frontman Anton Newcomb and release two albums with him, both of which are excellent. But the way I would describe this album's sound is very hazy, psychedelic rock that you can tell is influenced by 60s and 70s rock. In a way, at times it kind of reminds me of Mazzy Star, but much more aggressive, not very mellow. Now, why is this rare? Well, the CD version was released on an independent label called 359 Music, which is a label based in the UK. And as far as I know, the CD versions only had a limited release. I even went on 359 Music's website and there is no trace of Tess anywhere. It's as if they didn't release anything by her. The vinyl version of the album is much more easy to get, and that's because it was released on a more established UK label called Optic Nerve Recordings. But you can also get the digital version of this album easily on iTunes and Amazon MP3. Now, going into the Discog statistics for the CD release, the lowest price someone paid for it was $15.39, the highest was $25.66, and the median between that was $39.46. As of this recording, there are currently no listings on Discogs. And looking at other online services, there are currently no listing prices on eBay, just the vinyl version, not the CD. And on Amazon, there are some listings going for between $355 and $902. Now, where did I get my copy of the CD? Well, I got mine on Discogs, and I paid $79.24 plus shipping, and it was imported. It's probably the most I've spent on a CD, but honestly, it was worth it. And before I get too far away from it, I know some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, the price you paid is higher than any of the Discog statistics. And I think the reasoning for that is it's just not updated. So I guess you could say the highest that somebody paid for this album was how much I paid for it. From the standpoint of a collector, I wanted to have it in my collection. And I was glad I was able to find a listing for it for under $100. I'd been watching it for a while now, and I'd seen some pretty ridiculous prices. So I will be taking very, very good care of the CD. I already have it wrapped up in this here sleeve, and hopefully I can keep it in the condition that it's in. If I ever am in a pinch and I need some money, I can definitely resell it. But for now, I am hanging on to it, and I'm so happy I have it in my collection. <laughs> Alright internet, that doesn't do it for me. I know I said that Tess Park album was the last thing I have for you today. I actually have two more bonus CDs, both by the same band. I have two albums by the band Modern Baseball. The reason why I'm saving these for last is because, well, I don't really know if they're rare or not. I originally was going to be including one of these CDs, this one specifically, in the main list, but when I was conducting research on how much it was worth and where you could get it, I found some interesting information about it. And the same went with this one, but let me back up a bit, let's talk about these albums, what they sound like, and who the hell the band is. So Modern Baseball was a band that came from Pennsylvania. They had a pretty large following of people and a pretty good career for the age they all were. They were all under 21 when they first started. Unfortunately, they have since gone on indefinite hiatus, but most people figure they're no longer making music. They've technically broken up, they're not coming back. But 
I digress. So uh, this album right here, this is the band's debut album, Sports. It was originally released in 2012, and it was recorded when there were only two members in the band. They saved up their money, and they recorded the album in the studio at the college they were attending. And the way I would describe this album's sound is folk punk, pop punk, it's very reminiscent of the early works of The Front Bottoms. Very acoustic guitar centered music, but it also has drums, bass, vocals, sometimes some electric guitar, but for the most part, it's just acoustic guitar. This compilation of sings and tunes means everything to me now. Oh, I cut me open, but you did all the pouring out. And then this is a later release called Mobo Presents The Perfect Cast EP Featuring Modern Baseball. This EP came out in 2015, and it was released after the band's second album, You're Gonna Miss It All, and right before the band's third album, Holy Ghost. And by the time this EP came out, the band's sound had drastically changed. They had added two more members to the band, so there were four of them all together, and they had kind of ditched the acoustic guitar, at least on this EP, in favor of a more full band sound, with two electric guitars, bass, drums, and vocals. So is this the hook you As far as getting these albums digitally, you can get them both on iTunes, Amazon MP3, and on Bandcamp. This EP, as of this recording, is a name your price on Bandcamp, so you could get it for free if you want it. And going into the Discog statistics for both of these albums, let's start with sports. The lowest price someone paid for this album was $6 even, the highest was $9.87 and the median between that was $6. As of this recording, there is currently one listing on Discogs, and it's going for $25 even. And looking at other sources, there is one listing on eBay for $28.88, and on Amazon, there are listings that go for $32.31 to $37.99, as well as $90.61 to $90 even. And then looking at the Discogs, Cog stats for this EP, the lowest price someone paid for it was $8.98. The highest was $13.64, and the median between that was $11.31. As of this recording, there are no listings on Discogs. And to go even further, there are also no listings for the CD on either Amazon or eBay. The latter had a lot of listings for the vinyl version, but no CD. Now where the heck did I get my copies of the CDs? Well, for this EP, I got mine from a third-party seller on Amazon, and I paid $19.79 plus shipping. And for sports, I got my copy of it off of the Lamo Records website, Lamo being the label that put this album out, and I only paid $6 plus shipping for it. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, well, is it rare or is it not? And like I said in the beginning, I don't no. When I was conducting the research for both of these albums, I thought they were rare because based on eBay, Amazon, and Discogs, they were going for prices that were at the very least $25. So I kind of figured, well, I guess for whatever reason the albums are out of print. And then I went on the Lamo website and found both of these albums for $6 a piece. Which kind of killed the thought that these are both rare and hard to find CDs. But funny enough, as of this recording, the CD version of this album is sold out on Lamo Records. So it might be rare if you can't get it there, if you have to get it from Discogs, Amazon, or eBay. But that isn't to say that they could restock, so who knows? So I guess at the end of the day, if you are a fan of the band and you are looking for CD copies of either of these albums, do your research, do some shopping, look everywhere. I guess that's also kind of a good message for shopping for music in general. If you find something that's priced at a certain point, you should check other places. It might be $50 here. It could be $6 on the main website. It could be $6 elsewhere, who knows? As a collector, you should just do your shopping. Look around, see where you can find it. But for now, 
that's all for me, Internet. No more CDs for this video. Thank you so very much for watching. If you have any rare CDs in your collection, I'd love to hear about them. What is it? Where did you get it? How much did you pay for it? Leave a comment down below, tell me about it. And if you also like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It'll show me the support and I'll love your face for it. And you can also follow me on Instagram for even more music. I post a new album on there semi-frequently, talk a little bit about it, and it gives you a bit of an insight of what else is in my collection. So thank you again so much for watching this video. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out. Goodbye.